My name is Kai Köhne. I'm an R&D manager in the Berlin office. The tools that we are using are all integrated into Qt Creator. So, first of all, the setup. Um, this is very simple. There is an IMX6 board um, in the background um, with one display attached, uh, which runs Qt for device creation, actually the boot to Qt image. So, with Qt, if you are using our reference hardware, you get a ready-made um, image that you can just flash out of Creator uh, on an SD card. That's a little game. We get some documentation about it, but we ignore it for the moment. Then we can decide uh, the target, where we want to run it and how to compile it. So in this case, it's already configured for the boundary devices device I have in the background. However, I could as well run it on the desktop or in the emulator. But let's directly run it on the device, shall we? So the game is now running on the device. However, I don't want to play, I want to show you how to debug it. I'm stopping it and moving from the edit mode to the debug mode. Let me clean that up, that is a previous run. In addition, because I want to debug it, I have to switch to a debug configuration. Then I have to select the right tool, which is the debugger. Now let me set a breakpoint. The integrated debugger works both for C, C++ and JavaScript inside QML. So I can set breakpoints for both, even one session. But for the moment, because it's a QML application, I'm just setting a debugger in Start New Game in the JavaScript. Now I can run it. It takes longer because uh, even though I just set a breakpoint in JavaScript, it still starts GDB on the device, GDB server to be specific, and um, connects to it. So even before we hit a debugger, you can see the object tree that QML created here and can have a look at the different properties. To hit the breakpoint, I have to start a game. And now you can see that the breakpoint has been hit. As expected, I see the local variables and I see a stack trace. I could now get on, go on and step over or into code. This is the JavaScript side. If I would be back into C++, you would have a lot more possibilities. You could not only set breakpoints, but also watch points. Um, you could have a look at the memory, uh, the heap, uh, change stuff there. In case of GDB, you could also take snapshots, roll back actions, and so on. It's a pretty powerful debugger, with a lot of people use, even without using the rest of it. Let's use the chips demo. Yeah, let's just set, set a breakpoint on the constructor of chip. So now I have it hit the C++ breakpoint. Again, I have a stack trace. I see that I have a lot of more views. I can have a look at the threads. at the modules, at the source files, even at the registers of the CPU. So this one, for instance, shows the different modules. All right, but that's not the only thing. 
So that's just the debugger. Now we want a profile. To do this, to get accurate results, we should use the profile mode, not the debug mode, so that debug symbols are not loaded and the optimization is triggered. We have different profiling tools integrated. The CPU uses analyzer is for native stacks. It's actually a front end to perf. So perf is pretty standard on Linux. It's a sample-based profiler which shows you exactly um, where your time is spent, where the application spends its time in, uh, in the native code. However, we're going to profile the same game, which is a quick application. So the stack trace there won't show us much because it will be all internal. Instead, we will use the QML profiler. So I'm now going to start the same game on the device uh, with the QML profiler. It starts up, and we see that actually time is running. I'm go going to do some actions here, just to get some interesting traces. Now I'm stopping the application. And it's processing the data. What we have now here is a view, the timeline view on the data. So we can see what actually the QML engine is doing from the start. So it starts by compiling same .qml, which triggers loading and compiling of other files too. It always jumps to the right place in the, uh, in, the in the sources when clicked. After it created, uh, after it compiled uh, the QML files, it starts creating the actual objects, which in turn triggers bindings to be evaluated and signals in JavaScript to be run. So we have a pretty good understanding now what happens at the startup phase. We can also see details about the scene graph. So when we actually see something on the screen. We see that there is a startup phase there too, where, for instance, here, materials are compiled and uploaded then to the GPU, until finally um, it starts rendering, running the animations uh, with about 16 frames per second. There are more details about uh, the QML engine and the Qt Quick stack. So I can look at the PixMap cache, when images are loaded and how big they are. And I can also see the memory usage of JavaScript, so when uh, memory is allocated and when animations are running. So this allows me to really a deep, to, uh, allows me to have a deep dive into the uh, runtime of uh, Qt Quick and understand what is blocking me, why it takes so long, why animations are stuttering, or why startup is so slow. That's a good start to then further optimize. I should mention that there are different views on this. So this is the timeline view where the x-axis is the time. We have also an aggregated statistics view, which then tells you like overall aggregated where time is spent. There is also something called the flame graph with, which visualizes that. So here the x-axis isn't time, but rather the amount of time in total spent in different functions. So we can see that actually start new frame is taking most of the time in JavaScript and in there it's create block. So if we would try to optimize it, we would probably start here. I should mention that there are other tools too. So the CPU usage analyzer I mentioned already, it's, uh, it has the same views but on the native call stack. So C++ methods. We also have integration for two well grind tools, memcheck and call grind. 
Um, they are more accurate, so MemCheck is actually for tracking uh, memory leaks mostly, and Call Grind is another profiler, CPU profiler. However, uh, they are much more accurate, but they are so much slower, so you typically don't want to run them on the device, but only on the desktop. Anyway, that's perfectly possible. The Qt Quick Compiler is a feature that is a part of Qt for device creation, which uh, takes the QML files and at, at uh, compile time on the host, transforms them to C++. This means that the startup time, where usually QML files are loaded and uh, interpreted and compiled, um, uh, can be reduced. It's actually very easy to activate it. Inside the project plane, it's actually nowadays enabled by default, enable Qt Quick Compiler. The Qt Quick Compiler um, has been available since Qt 5.6, I think. Um, I have to say that with newer Qt versions, uh, Qt 5.8 onwards, we have been also working on caching, so that even without the Qt Quick Compiler, um, the results of the parsing are cached on the device, and uh, so that the first startup time might be slower, but follow on, um, it actually uh, it gets faster too. And there is no clear rule whether the Qt Quick Compiler in the end is a better option or relying on this caching. You have to profile it.